Okay, well, we might just start. I know a few attendees are still joining, but I think we've got a lot to cover today, which is really exciting. So thanks for joining us for the Q&A. Just to let you know that before we start the session, uh, this is going to be recorded. So um, record is on. So my name is Ying Di. I'm the Senior Communications Manager at Artichoke. My pronouns are she and her. I'm an East Asian person in my early 30s. I have mid-length black hair and I'm wearing a black jumper. So I thought I would introduce a panelist today before we get into the nitty gritty of it all. So first of all, we have Martin Farrell, our creative director of the gallery. So Martin is a British public artist whose works challenge unjust power systems of all kinds. He uses language to engage directly with the public, provoking dialogue about more equitable social organization. His work has been described as art as debate. So as well as being our creative director, Martin was also the lead artist for season one of the gallery. And then next we have our exhibition curator, Bren O'Callaghan. So Bren is an experienced curator and creative producer based in Manchester. His curatorial interests sit at the crossroads of art, counterculture and activism, frequently championing those excluded from the mainstream and with meaningful application to a variety of lived experiences. So he has previously worked as curator for the Art Center home in Manchester. And in 2019, Brent founded the Manchester Open, uh, a biennial showcase for greater Manchester artists. And then finally, we have Nicola Irvine, who was our, one of our season one selected artists. Her artwork is titled, Anything You Can Do, I Can Do Bleeding. And Zoe, our comms coordinator, is going to share that um, in the chat if you want to have a look at her artwork that was displayed across billboards um, throughout the Four Nations. So Nicola is a freelance illustrator and 2D animator based in Belfast and a selected artist for the gallery, season one. Her work is a mix of traditional and digital and her aesthetic focuses on non-conventional canons of beauty, ugly art and colourful, quirky and often textural shapes. She likes to illustrate heavy subjects that are important to her, but in a fresh and uplifting way. And so today, Nicola will be talking about her artwork and her experience for gallery season one. Um, and as mentioned, the link is in the chat room if you wanna see her artwork. So introductions aside, this evening's Q and A will run as follows. The, 30, the first 30 minutes will be an overview of Artichoke and the gallery, you know, including what it is, um, its origins. Nicola will discuss her experience as an artist um, for season one, and Bren and Martin will discuss the theme, the state we're in, uh, works in the public realm, the process for submission and selection process. And the remaining 30 minutes will be focused on the Q&A. So a huge thank you for everyone who has sent questions in advance. We'll go through these in the Q&A section of the session. Um, we're using the chat for questions throughout, so please pop any questions that you may have um, in there and then we can share them at the end. Great, I think we've got most people in. So Artichoke is one of the UK's leading pro art producers. We work with local in and internationally renowned artists to produce ambitious and extraordinary large scale public art events and experiences in cities and the countryside and on coastlines of the UK. Um, over the last 16 years, Artichoke has produced more than 25 groundbreaking productions, including Lumiere, the UK's leading light art biennial event in Durham, Derry, London Derry, and London, and most recently Sanctuary, an unforgettable temporary structure and space of healing designed by American artist David Best and built by the local community of Bedworth to commemorate the nation's loss during COVID. So Artichoke's mission statement is to disrupt the everyday with art. And the gallery is the light, latest in a long line of disruptive projects that attempts to change public spaces and the way that people see their place in it, making it accessible to everyone. So that's a nice sum up of Artichoke. I'll now hand over to Brent to discuss what the gallery project is. Sure, thanks Ingdi. Uh, my name is Brent O'Callaghan. I'm a curator, an independent curator, but also a curator with the gallery for Artichoke. Uh, my pronouns are he and him. I'm a middle-aged white male with short, dark brown, slick back hair, uh, glasses, and a brown plaid shirt. Um, so a little bit about the gallery. It's a new kind of public institution, or, or so we hope it to be. Uh, when you think of an exhibition, usually 
um, or a venue, um, you know, they are tied and bound to actual kind of buildings, which are in usually one location. And it means that those in the vicinity can perhaps attend, but uh, those elsewhere would have to hop onto a train or into a car and drive, or perhaps it's just too far. Um, so the gallery presents work outdoors. It actually utilizes thousands of sites across the UK, sites that are typically reserved for advertising. Uh, they can range from bus stops to outdoor screens, to printed billboard posters, to uh, screens in shopping malls, at transport hubs, and even in cinemas as well. So it's literally thousands of sites across the UK. Uh, they are outdoors. Uh, and because of that, it means that unlike uh, gallery environments, um, they don't come with kind of text on the walls or brochures or someone to explain what the work is about, or even that you're looking at an artwork. And perhaps we can talk later about how you can actually amplify that and make the most of that opportunity. It's not necessarily a negative thing. And the gallery also exists to kind of um, provoke debate and discussion and dialogue about important and urgent and critical questions of our time. So each exhibition will have a theme that we ask artists to respond to. Our theme for season one was straight white male, three words that generated a lot of debate, as you can imagine. Uh, and our theme for season two is the state we're in, uh, which is very kind of broad in the sense that it could be applied to many different subjects and, and uh, solicit many different responses. Uh, so we will ultimately select uh, 10 artists per season or per exhibition. Uh, we had 10 artists for season one and we will have 10 artists again for season two. Uh, and uh, we know now, following the success of season one, that um, the artworks were viewed by over 12 million people all across the UK. Uh, they're displayed from Northern Ireland to Scotland, Wales and England. Uh, but they're also hosted online on uh, the gallery's dedicated website which is www.thegallery.org.uk. Great, thanks, Bren. And we'll hand over to Martin now to talk about the origins of the project. Hello, everybody. My name is Martin Farrell, and I am a public artist. My pronouns are he and him, but I'll also answer to anything as long as it's said with kindness and respect. Um, I'm a 50 something white man. I've got a black shirt on and a big black fake fur hat because I'm cold and <laughs> big black glasses. There's a lot of emphasis on black there, art black, because it's very easy as an artist to just wear black and then you don't have to think about um, what to wear that day. Um, the gallery comes from a conversation between myself and the artistic director of Artichoke, Helen Marriage, during lockdown, where obviously opportunities for artists to show um, disappeared overnight because no one could go to a gallery and share artworks. Uh, so we had an idea about using the billboard form that Bren's talked about so eloquently to show work, but we were also keen that we did something new, not just stick art on billboards, which is done in the past, and hence the ambition to create a gallery that has um, longevity through a new season, each new season having a new reason to be, a new theme, a new uh, uh, area to address for artists to address, but also for us to do all that clever stuff like archiving and interpretation, all those things you'd expect from a gallery with a big old building, but we don't have a building, which means we're not trapped inside, um, you know, behind walls and the art's out there. I like to think of it as feral, like a cat, you know, it's escaped got out of the living room and run all around the country. So it is a wonderful opportunity to be seen, um, but the frame around being seen is slightly different from showing in a gallery, for example, which we'll come on to a bit later, I think. That was a great explanation. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Um, so Nicola, we'd love to hear from you and about your experience in season one, starting maybe how you, came across the gallery and what that submission process like was for you and you know maybe why you picked this artwork as well. Sorry I was on mute there. Um, okay hi I'm Nicola I'm an illustrator I was an artist for gallery one. I my pronouns are she her I'm a white female 20 something I'm wearing a white t-shirt and I have brown hair so I'm gonna talk about I heard about Artichoke and I heard about it through Instagram. Actually, Bren 
messaged me because I think you've seen my old, I did billboards previous for Alliance for Choice, which is a pro-choice organization in Belfast. And um, when I seen the theme straight white male, I thought, oh God, what am I gonna do for that? But I thought back to, um, I'd done a workshop with students about pro-choice themes and just um, female and pregnant people um, ideas. And one of the students wrote, anything you can do, I can see bleeding. And they did it in bloody words. And I thought for straight white males saying that would be kind of funny, but also kind of start a conversation. I think that's what it's all about, just starting a conversation and it, it's because the billboards might change within seconds. It's nice to just it hit right away. So I thought that would work, just the words. And then when I was coming up with the illustration, I thought that I would create like inclusive imagery. So it'd have characters that were inclusive and um, different types of people that bleed. Uh, and I wanted the color of the background to be pink so that it stood out and it was bright, colorful. It catch your eye because you never really see a bright pink billboard. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I started with a sketch, but I did my sketch digit digitally. But then I know someone else that applied and they applied with just a paper sketch and that works too. So I submitted that and then I got free. And then I did my artwork on Procreate digitally. Um, and yeah, and then I sent it through to Artichoke. I think you paid the first thousand and then I did the work. And then after we went to London, then you paid the final money for that. And um, what else? Yeah, that's all I can think of right now. But then I sent through the artwork and I think your design team then put it together and I approved of it. And then, and then we went to London and we went to the exhibition, um, watched them and it was really good. <laughs> Great, thank you, Nicola. There were definitely opportunities for you to jump back in and talk about your experience as we talk about other aspects of this submission process. Um, and then next we're gonna talk about making art in the public realm. And I think Nicola, you can jump in here as well. Um, Martin's gonna have a chat about it and just making art that works for billboards, which I know you already touched on as well, Nicola, but maybe we'll start with Martin first. Thank you. I think um, someone said to me once who did a lot of practice in the public realm, they said they got really angry when artists whose entire experience was in the gallery worked in the public realm and just took exactly that same sensibility that they used in the gallery and just stuck it into public space. And they said they felt um, peeved because they thought one, it didn't work and it was a kind of arrogance that the gallery is a very particular environment, an important and particular environment, but the public realm is equally significant but very very different and understanding the differences and taking the time to sort of honor the medium was a good thing in this friend's view um, and I also uh, concur with that idea I think that you know that Bren's touched on it the challenge is that the work is not mediated if we go to a, a gallery or any space that's showing art in a formal way, one, you've you've made the decision to go and look at it, so you've already sort of opted in, and then there will be support for understanding the, the context of the work or, you know, kind of how who the artist is or what, you know, kind of what their intention was around making the work. Um, that can be true in the public realm, of course, because you can go to a sculpture garden and that will be mediated, but without of home, there is no mediation, and the medium itself is entirely passive it's really good to think of it as wallpaper and that you're wallpapering and wasn't it Oscar Wilde who said either the wallpaper goes or I do and then died and so wallpaper can be very powerful and interesting but it's very gentle it takes a while for the work to register in people's minds because they're not looking for it the general public haven't opted to go and look at the art it's sort of foisted upon them which is one of the things I love about making art in the, in the public realm and especially with billboards because of course advertisers are doing it all the time by Shmernoff, by Shmernoff. we get to do it as artists 
Um, but we have to make sure we modify or adapt our practice so that it speaks loudly and clearly enough. Otherwise, no one will notice. The big, the great threat, the great problem is not controversy. It's being ignored because no one spotted it. And when we were selecting the works, one of the things that was fantastic and that stood out about Nicola's work were visually it was really striking before you started just looking at it was incredibly striking and quick to see what it was it was very immediate and then of course to say anything you can do I, I can do bleeding is a very very powerful statement that provokes and we do we don't want to be inflammatory for the sake of it to insult people or you know cause arguments but we do want to be provocative in order to encourage people to think about how they feel about the work and also to speak with others who also see the work because unlike all other um uh you know commercial media it is still shared you know kind of uh, ironically social media can be quite a solitary experience because you're not stood next to someone and you can't go gosh what do you think of that because that's not the way it works so understanding what you think about a work but also what other people say and think and when we started right at the beginning with the gallery, we said we wanted to um, create national conversations to help to shape national conversations around our themes. And I think the state we're in has become hor horrendously prophetic when you know, we've all been talking about how we're just putting more jumpers on because we don't dare put the heating on. The pound is going down the toilet. You know, everyone, everyone thinks Britain's in a dreadful old state just to keep it local for a minute. And here we are as artists saying, well, let's think about the state we're in and what should we be talking about? Which bit of this is really critical? Um, and now I'm just wittering on, so I'll shut up and let Ying Di do that brilliant thing where she makes everyone say things and it's really good. <laughs> Thanks, Martin. Um, well, you've touched on the theme, which is great. And it's nice to hear how you view that theme. And maybe we can hear from Brennan you can take over about the theme and we can kind of jump into the process. I mean, there are many kind of universal applications to the theme that might arise from the state we're in. So, you know, we could uh, address or someone could choose to address like the climate crisis um, or politics, be that very kind of localised or international. They could address uh, gender identity, they could address Black Lives Matter. Um, there are kind of many different universal themes that could arise. Uh, but I'd also be interested in encouraging people to consider kind of very personal themes as well. The state we're in, where it doesn't have to mean the whole of the human race, and of course it can, but it could mean a tribe to which you ascribe um, or um, something very personal to your own kind of family setup as well, or your own community. Uh, and we, we do want there to be um, submissions from all over the UK and there's no restriction on who might apply. So should anyone be joining us today and you're not from within the UK, that's absolutely fine. We also want some international voices too. Uh, but even within the UK itself, what is a hot topic in Manchester or London, um, you know, may not land um, with the same degree of significance in the Welsh Valleys. So you know, we want to hear about the state we're in, uh, how that affects you. But also, um, if you find yourself kind of struggling to apply the theme, um, I, I would question whether this might be the theme that you wish to respond to, because the gallery will have uh, two exhibitions per year and there'll be a different theme per exhibition. But hopefully uh, you already have something to say. So if you're kind of casting about and thinking, I'm not really sure what I want to say, then perhaps you don't have anything to say right now for this theme. Ideally, it's, uh, and I'm sorry to say this, but ideally, it's the kind of thing that keeps you awake at night, you know, if you've, that, you're, you're, that's, that's, that you've already had conversations about with friends and family, or perhaps you've already acted upon or, or stuck your head above the parapet to, to comment uh, regarding. So, um, yeah, there's, it, it's really wide open, this one. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing who might submit what. Great. Yeah, we're very excited. Um, and just a reiteration, I'm sure you already know, but applications close on Sunday, the 16th of October. So you do have um, just over two weeks to, to really get those submissions and think into that theme and have some dreams about it. Um, so now we'll jump into the process for submission and I'll let Bren kind of run through that. Sure, so we're asking people to submit um, a proposal and please don't think that has to mean a finished artwork. Um, and in fact, if you already have a finished artwork, I would encourage you 
to consider if it really is appropriate to both the theme, but also the medium of presentation. Because if it's already finished and you didn't create it with this open call in mind, then it's highly likely that you weren't intending it to be presented in out outdoors for a start. Um, you know, if it's a, a, a canvas, for example, if it's on a painting, and we will consider paintings, of course, but if it were a painting, then it's already limited by the size and the dimensions of that canvas. You know, can it be cropped uh, without losing kind of um, key elements that you wish to retain? Can it be turned sideways? Um, you know, does it immediately communicate your intention um, or does it require someone to explain uh, what, what your thoughts behind the piece were? So I, I would really encourage people to conceive and you rather than adapt. Uh, so I would definitely think, yeah, conceive and you if you possibly, possibly can. But if you do feel strong that you have something you would like us to see that and you feel it kind of suits and it can be adapted, it can be turned into a digital file, it can be cropped, it, it, you know, you could separate the layers perhaps, um, then by all means, please do submit that still. Um, uh, so what we want to see is we want to see what your idea is. We really want to know why it, why it addresses the theme. And that is one of the questions in the application process. And you'd be surprised at how many people don't respond to that question or leave it blank. Um, so please do respond to that question. Why does it fit the theme? And there's no wrong answer. Just tell us why you think it fits the theme. And that at least shows us that, that you've uh, given some thought to that. And then we're looking for examples of your work. So please tell us what your proposal is. And not simply that I, you know, I work in this way and these are the themes that I address. You know, please do describe what it is that you want to make were you selected for a commission. Um, describe it, sketch it. Uh, don't worry if sketching isn't your greatest strength. Um, collage it. Um, get, get someone to, to, to support you and help you if, you if you need a little bit of extra support. Um, but yeah, tell us what it is that we will see or we will make if we do choose your work. Uh, and you can also attach you know, up to um, four examples of, of previous work or references or mood boards, for example, as well. But yeah, please tell us how it fits the theme and show us the style that you intend to adopt. Uh, and as Ying Di mentions, we've got a couple of weeks left through to the closing of submissions. Um, at that point, we will kind of look through those works. We will um, remove works that are not suited so for those who have submitted proposals for live performances or sculptures or um, video art pieces uh, it's lovely to see all these things but they're not suited for our purpose and we've been very particular and that's that's all in, all that information is in the guideline too we're looking for a kind of 2d uh, work uh, we'll also do a pass on what may or may not be um, kind of contentious as well uh, and maybe we can pick this question up you know in a, in a few moments as well, because um, that's definitely open to interpretation. But if there's anything that's that's particularly explicit um, or distressing, you know, we, we may wish to kind of remove those before they reach the selection panel. Uh, and so we'll end up with a, having made a first pass. Um, and believe me, we're, we're looking for excuses to keep the work in. We're not looking to weed it out unnecessarily. Uh, and then we will have a selection panels we did for our first season. So that means it isn't one person making all the decisions. And the selection panel will bring lots of kind of different lived experiences and skill sets uh, to the table, literally to a table that we all sit around. Uh, and then we'll review and assess and um, discuss all the work. And we are looking for a, a group of work as well. So we're looking at, about work that kind of sits well and kind of bounces and riffs off each other. And in that sense, you don't have any control <laughs> over the, the final, final selection because it will depend on you know which um, pieces are right you know rise float to the surface almost uh, and then we'll sort of like curate um, the remainder of the exhibition around those kind of standout pieces. Thank you that's great I don't know if Martin or Nicola you want to add anything uh, to what Bren has just uh, explained. I'd love to. I'd love to talk about, you know, the practicalities of getting selected, because mm -hmm. obviously, you know, we've 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 done season one. I've seen how the panel works. And I think it's incredibly important as a submitting artist to think about what the writing says about your work, because some of the selection panel will read first before they look at images, but some will look at images before they read. So ideally, you need a fantastic opening statement about why this work should be selected. 
and because it relates to the theme and you did a fantastic picture number one because that's how you get to be considered because it, that, that was our experience with Nicola you know she just she had a great statement and a great image and so you know kind of was selected on the basis of grabbing the attention of the majority of the panel early on um, we will look really carefully, obviously, at, at all work submitted, but we're only human. So if it's hard to see what it is, or if it's not clear what it is, then we don't have the tools to say we should select this work because we can't see what it is. Um, so it's about being, I think, really bold and clear with one piece of writing, one image. You can show, you can do ancillary writing. There are other questions I know and, you know, to answer, and you can show ancillary images. Um, but you want to catch the imagination with what, one of those, one each of those. And also, of course, that's how the medium works, because we're selecting, but in the end, an unwitting public will just start to see it. And so they will need to have their attention arrested and they will need to think about it and want to understand it. And it must be possible for there to unravel the meaning. Otherwise, um, it, it just won't work. It'll just sit there as ignored wallpaper. So that would be my um, my top tip is, um, yeah, big and bold. I think, Brian, it was really interesting when you said about sort of contentious and stuff, because I always like the contentious and would always try to include. I mean, everyone felt Nicola's work was very contentious because it related to menstruation, which people find problematic for some reason. And so I did actually do, before we told Nicola that we loved her work, we went and had conversations with the billboard companies to say, we have a piece of work, we think it's by an important artist and it's important because it's about you know, menstruation, but that's going to cause trouble probably, but it's a feminist issue that it may cause trouble and that's why we should be showing the work. And that was agreed, so we all understood exactly what we were doing. So I don't think, I know what you're saying, Bren, about you can't just show a big picture of your bottom and hope to be selected because <laughs> it probably won't mean anything, just be a bit rude. Um, but as long as it's on message, you know, on, on theme, if it's quite bold and arresting, we will try to show it if it's good work. We, we may be thwarted, of course. But. It's a good thing to make people angry. I think it's a good thing to do that because I did billboards for... The pro-choice thing and they were ripped down within a day um and it said abortion is normal on them and from that it created a lot of conversation and it got people talking it actually was a good thing that they were ripped down and they made people angry because it showed that it was still an issue um but i get also from like the billboard company point of view they don't want that <laughs> so I think you should go bold. <laughs> but most definitely, and I wouldn't wish to give the suggestion that people only play it safe. That wasn't my intention at all. Also, that do consider that um, it's not in a gallery environment, and that's to our benefit that it's not in a gallery environment, um, and that anyone and everyone is using that space. So, um, and we do want to kind of push the envelope. You know, it is a, a, a dedicated form of presentation by itself. Um, I think people don't understand that there's a hundred year history to presenting work, um, you know, from the early days to kind of bill posters to um, the first kind of digital and illuminated screens. And so it is worth considering in that sense, it's not simply an outdoor wall. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's great to have a bit more nuanced and getting a few varied opinions on what to submit. So hopefully that's getting everyone's juices flowing. Um, I think we're on to the Q&A section now. So if you haven't already, please feel free to submit some questions and we can start answering them. I think I can start picking out some. So Emily has asked, are you eligible if you haven't gone to art school? So maybe, Bren, you could answer that. Most definitely, yes. Yes, 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 yes. A thousand times, yes. Anyone can submit. Um, it is all about the strength of the piece that you are submitting. And in many cases, people who have gone to art school <laughs> are actually at a disservice because they are so wrapped up in art speak and overly complicate their proposals that they don't think about clearly communicating their intention. Um, so it's a double edge. It really is a double edged sword. But yes, you are most definitely eligible. And please let others know as well. 
great. And Kerry had a question for Nicola. When working in Procreate, how do I ensure my design will transfer well to such a large scale? Can you tell me some technical details um, such as DPI, scale, so sizes? I know it's getting a bit particular, but. When you're on Procreate and you go to Canvas information, there's a DPI and you just need to keep it above 300 DPI for it to work for billboards and anything big like that. So, yeah. Great, I hope that answered that question, Kerry, but feel free to do a follow-up if you need. And then um, Zainab, hope I'm saying that right, please correct me if not. Um, is it the correct that we are only required to submit proposals and not complete artworks by the deadline? Yep, go for yeah. it, Bren. Yeah, sure, We're yeah, that, that, that's correct. We would never expect you to sit at home unpaid, you know, slogging for weeks or months, you know, to create uh, an artwork that you're not certain is going to be selected. So yes, you would wish to um, limit the time, um, by all means, spend as much time as you choose to, but uh, we're looking for like a, a sketch, as it were, you know, and it not, doesn't mean a literal sketch. It could be a collage sketch. It could be a mood board sketch. Um, so we're looking for, you know, but, but do tell us what it is. You know, often people can get so wrapped up in talking about references or what influences them or what they've done previously, they actually forget to tell us what they're intending to make, were they to get the commission. So, uh, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't have to be finished. For those few who do feel very, very strongly that they have something ready to go that suits both the theme and the nature of outdoor presentation and that can be, um, you know, processed into a digital file because we're not looking for a physical artwork to exhibit. It's ultimately a digital file. Uh, but don't be scared by the word digital. Just if you don't kind of work in that manner, it, it, can, it can be photographed, right? So that, that in its sense turns it into a digital file. Uh, but those who feel that they really strongly do have something to go, they, they may wish to submit essentially an almost finished file. Um, and we could pick up that conversation where they select it. But uh, no, it does not need to be finished. And, and bear that in mind across other open calls. If people are asking you to submit finished pieces, that's a little bit naughty. Thanks, Bren. OK, so we have Shireen who's asked, do we have dimensions that we should bear in mind? And are they on L LED screens? So, Bren, I know you know the specific I'll, I'll keep going, yeah, it's fine, yeah. Jump right in, I think. Yeah, yeah. so we, we have some proposed dimensions, which I don't, I don't have to hand right now, but we have some proposed dimensions as part of the submission form online. So that's all there. And you can pull those out before you even start kind of filling in and submitting. But broadly speaking, um, images for um, out of home, which is the advertising sites outdoors, are either portrait in shape or landscape in shape. Now, portrait is by far the most common um, shape uh, for kind of out of home use. Um, it, it is for digital screens, uh, but it's also for kind of print sites as well. So think of like, you know, the side of bus stops. When you're standing at the bus stop, that's called a six sheet. Don't worry why it's called a six sheet, um, but that's portrait, portrait Can shape. Can I say just that, um... It's better to work in landscape because you can make it push it down into portrait. But if you're in portrait, you got to make sides for your landscape. So you're better working on landscape and then putting it into portrait. It's, it's a good point, too. And so I think initially with our first season, we were hopeful that each and every piece that we commissioned um, could work as both portrait and landscape. And I think now we're sort of erring towards perhaps some pieces will only work in one shape or another, but ideally they would work across both. We would love it to work across both because that means we can use all the, all the opportunities available to us. But if you have something that you that only works, you know, in, in widescreen landscape or that only works in portrait, um, then we still want to see it. And we could and we move to have that conversation with you as well, you know, and, and perhaps, you know, support you to that process. But yeah, thanks Nicola, that's a really good point. Yeah, you can always, um, adapt a landscape into a portrait and there's always going to be a compromise right between the two you'll, you'll lose um, mm -hmm. space I think um, as well when I work in this space I work really roughly on 
um, a two to one frame. So, you know, it's it's either going to be twice as tall as it's wide or twice as wide as it's tall. And that gets you roughly the right shape for landscape or portrait. Some of them will be a little bit different. But if you create work in that in that in, in those ratios with a bit of a margin around the edge, you'll mostly be able to fit everything. So it's because sometimes it can seem very complicated and like there's lots of different technical things to take into account, but it's basically two to one portrait or landscape. And then as Nicola said, just if, as long as you're working at 300 DPI, the actual digital sites are really quite crude because they're seen from a long, long way away. So they're normally at play out at 72 DPI. So the files aren't actually that big when you get there. So it's, a, it's actually quite simple, I think, um, if you think in those terms, easier. Mm -hmm. Great. And we've had a few questions around text. So the, you know, should they, do you recommend considering how text can be involved in the work or does the image proposal have to include text? No, you don't need to include text unless you want to. All it has to do is comment on the theme. So if if there's a way you can make a, a banana and six onions be a comment on the state we're in, then send us a banana and six onions, obviously, as, as a two dimensional <laughs> image. Don't send us the actual onions. But um, no, you don't have to have text at all. And I'll just add to that that if you did choose to use text and you clearly don't have to um and if that text if if in using that text you really wish to express a statement it's not something kind of background pattern but you wish to express a statement of some kind um please make sure that that text is legible so simply the fact that this is kind of blown up onto giant screens or billboards uh, doesn't mean that it's, it becomes more legible if that text is already quite small. So please keep in mind and have a look at some of the examples on the gallery website because they give you a really good indication of the, of the type of text and the scale of the text. And um, so, for example, you know, um, if you are a poet and you wish to um, submit um, an extract, um, you know, a, a sentence is going to be much more powerful and impactful than the entire poem. So, so yeah, consider legibility of that text and, and place yourself in the position of the audience, whether you're in the back seat of an Uber driving past the digital screen uh, or whether you're on a tram um, or whether you're standing at the bus stop as well. So, so it's, a, it's a glance and you've got seconds to communicate that message. That's a good point, Bren. So we've got Yarden who's asked, I was wondering, is it okay to submit a sketch and supporting documents? How much room for change and development of the project is there in between being selected to the deadline? Do you want to do that one, Brad? Please do. <laughs> no, I said, do you want to do it? I thought you said, <laughs> okay. I can do it if you want me to, but I was thinking it's quite, you know, this is back to the story of the goat, isn't it? <laughs> how, much, how much time and development, et cetera. What... Sure, yeah, of course. So were you to be selected, and we let people know as, as soon as possible um, that we're talking very, very early in November. Uh, we do have a quite a narrow window in which to um, develop, produce, create and complete your work. So it's about five weeks. So we're looking at sort of early December with, you know, a little bit of, of, of scope for creep, not too much. So about five to six weeks in order to create the work. So you must keep in mind, you know, how you wish to create that. So if it's not simply you on your own and you're wishing to you know, incorporate skills or expertise from outside or from elsewhere or hire a photo studio or create costumes, then, you know, please keep all of that in mind that you're going to have to respond very, very quickly. And um, yeah, there is, you know, um, scope to, um, you know, to sort of like um, to, to learn and, and to, you know, incorporate um, feedback and discussions. And so in terms of like mentoring through that process, essentially um, we're available as little or as much as, as people need. So, you know, if people were to say, well, do you think this will work? Or do you think that will work? Then we're happy to uh, provide feedback for those um, artists who are, who are selected, um, which may, you know, therefore result in the work changing slightly, but fundamentally we would hope that it, it, it kind of kept its, its core theme because that's how it was selected after all. I think my um, advice would be um, by all means, um, 
submit a sketch and a description, but make sure the actual work is something you know how to do, you know, that is your thing, because there isn't a lot of time and there aren't additional resources to fund research and development. You know, there's not the money all the time. So if it's your thing, you know, if you, if you run up a giant chicken costume many evenings and say so you know how yeah. to do it and you need a giant chicken costume, that's going to be great because you'll be able to do it but if you've never done it before you know and you don't know what a chicken looks like then that's going to take a long time and it will be too slow and we won't be able to give enough support to make it possible but as long as it's sort of what you do then 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 I think you'll be fine I think that was sort of Nicola's experience wasn't it Nicola because your work you did you check you developed your work but it was in the context yeah. of what you normally do it was illustration and design well, I think if you're going to do it, you might as well use it to your advantage and do what you love to do rather than, you know, do something that you're not actually you. Because I think with the theme now, you can really apply it to anything, you know, uh, that's important to you. So rather than go, maybe a lot of people will go like a political way. You could go maybe mental health or anything. And yeah, I think that's a good thing about that theme because I was struggling with the straight white male because I thought, oh, I can't apply this. Mine's around like um, women and pregnant people kind of issues. But there's always a way that you can put it in so that you can do what you wanted to do. Yeah. I think that's great. That's what artists do, isn't it? Just what they want to. That's yeah. really the whole point of being an artist, isn't it? I think that's actually really brilliant advice. Just do what you want to do. All you have to do is convince us that it connects to the theme. And we have to believe you because obviously that's what how we've set up the gallery. But otherwise, just do whatever you want. I feel like that's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> but then it has an energy, I think. I think when you really intend your work, it has sort of motive energy behind it that comes through. You can always tell if someone wasn't quite convinced or certain, or I think you can always tell if work is made for ulterior motives because it doesn't quite yeah. ring right. It has a dull ring to it. So I think that's great advice. Mm -hmm. Great. And we had a few questions about uh, submitting the images. So one is, can we use an older image that gives an impression of our style, even though the subject may be different? Um, I would say yes, but as long as it, it reflects your intended approach. And so say you're working with paint, you know, do show as an example of, your, of the, your, your painting methods that you intend to apply to this proposal. Um, or if you work in illustration, give us an indication of your illustration style. If you have a, 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 a kind of a, an, an authentic style that is you know, unique to you, um, I would say don't waste those attachment opportunities with attachments or references or images that don't relate to your proposal as it is. So you know it may be that you worked in other mediums, you know, live performance, um, circus. Um, but if that's not going to reflect and expand and, and help us understand the nature of your proposal for this specific commission, maybe leave those out. Yeah, I think I think there's there's actually a risk in submitting, for example, a painting style uh, as your as the main part of your submission because the panel will look at it and go, I don't see how this relates to to the theme. It'd be much better to to submit a really bad sketch that does relate to the theme and is powerful and then have your painting example behind that so that the selection panel see what it is you're proposing to do. Because as an artist, you have to be saying something of substance about the state we're in. That's the job, say something about that. And then things like painting styles and they are all, of course, support for your voice, but they're not your voice. That they're, 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 they're the, the form rather than the intention. And you must make sure the intention comes through clearly because you might be overlooked because there, there were a lot of submissions last time. And, you know, we're all human and we try and stay as fresh as we can. But if it's really difficult to understand what it is we're being offered, 
then it's just human nature to go, I, I, I can't quite see it. And because of the medium we're working in, other people, you know, the, the public won't be able to see it either unless it's very immediate. So I'd, 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 really, I'd really advise caution on that. I think your intention is what we need to understand. And it, and it doesn't really matter how you express that intention, as long as it's really clear that you have something to say about the state we're in, and then everything else is secondary. Great. And then just another question on the images, um, which I think we've kind of just answered, but I'll repeat it just in case you feel like we haven't. Are the four supporting images meant to contain previous work or just sketches, mock-ups for the proposed artwork for this specific commission? And will we be penalised for not sending in previous work? That was from Marcus. No one will be penalised for anything. <laughs> and the only thing get penalised for is being vague, because then we don't understand how it's a comment on the state we're in. But, but sorry, Bren, I interrupted. No, no, that was the first thing I was about to say. Also, was like, if we're not looking to punish or, or to um, remove people um, for no reason, um, I would just say prioritise images, sketches, references for the proposal. But of course, we do want to see some kind of evidence that you're capable of, of delivering the work as well and that you've made work before. But um, that I would say that comes secondary to images and sketches around the proposal. Um, and, but we'd like to see that you, you're capable of making some work. Great. Are there any more questions? Um, we've actually answered all the Q&As. Oh, one just popped up from Joe. So would it be useful to provide art practice content context via web links? Also, I love the insight from Nicola. That was just a comment, but the first wow. part was the question. Yeah, we do, we do have a stage of the application process is if you wish to include, you don't have to include um, a website and it doesn't have to be a fully professional website. It can be uh, an Instagram account or similar, you know, what um, some people um, use Twitter rather than Instagram. Um, if there's a, or even just a one page, it may not be your website in which you feature or your work features. Uh, you, you can include a, a web address if you choose to, but again, no one's penalized if they don't include a web address. Great. And is there any other questions or, um, sorry, not questions, any other um, information that you'd maybe like to bring up about this open call? Any advice and tips? We've powered through these um, questions, which is fantastic. But if you have any others, please feel free to send it on in the chat. We do have about 10 more minutes. I do think, uh, you know, kind of boldness and naughtiness is very appealing. So if someone did want to send me a thousand pounds as a bribe to be included in the selection, and that was their comment on the state we're in, that would work. <laughs> that, that is actually genius, of course. Um, I think a comment I'll, I'll just kind of throw into the mix um, is, if you are repurposing imagery from elsewhere, um, then do consider that we to be selected. So if you're using archival news image or anything of that type, do consider that we would need you to show evidence of kind of clearing permissions for that. So it, it's great and, it, and it's, um, I wouldn't wish to dissuade anyone from using archival imagery, but to keep in mind that, um, and it's very normal of course, it would be the same if you were in a gallery environment, uh, that we would wish to sort of like explore what permissions had been sort of, um, confirmed you know, around that. And, and you'd be surprised, you know, permissions can be sought and, and secured as well. And that in itself is a valuable learning process too. Wonderful. Okay, well, it looks like we've answered all questions. Um, <laughs> Joe has commented on, um, your comment before Martin, would a thousand pounds of banana and six onions be acceptable for Martin? <laughs> Definitely, you're in. Job done. Have you got a last thought, Nicola? Not really, no. <laughs> I loved what you were saying, um, just do what you love. I thought that was really powerful. Yeah, I think some of my billboards actually, they weren't allowed to be shown some places, but it was still accepted, right? 
they weren't allowed to be shown in England, but in Northern Ireland they were. I can't remember. Well, this, is, this is a really nice kind of like moment to kind of close with, I think, as well, because uh, with your work, Nicola, it's, it's true um, and that, that you know, there are some locations around the UK where some it, it, it's, you know, it relates to the, um, like the, the tenants or the owners of certain buildings, for example, may uh, have objections or perhaps they face a faith based group or something like this. And um, but I'm, I'm sure people are probably aware if you're not aware, you probably are aware we just didn't, didn't realize it that menstruation can't be shown in advertising and um, like true depiction of menstruation can't be shown in advertising uh, and that even applied to the illustrated menstruation as well uh, and so there were sites around the UK where Nicola's work actually screened on digital sites and also on print based sites but on digital sites these the work was screened after the nine o'clock watershed and although that might seem restrictive it was actually a, a little bit of history in the making in, the, in that we're pushing and yes we'll, we'll get you know some some kind of kickback but we are wishing to um you know encourage the owners of these sites to make them more available for the display of provocative artwork and not simply just kind of lovely pictures of, of lilies and 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 the like, the like to promote a, a show a museum um and so we did you know actually create our own little bit of history there by by, by showing, you know, illustrated menstruation, albeit after the nine o'clock. Which time. wasn't that bad compared to my pro-choice ones that were ripped down in the day. Of course, and of course. The staff were abused and stuff. So the actual billboard companies had to take it down within a day. Um, so that wasn't too bad. But um, yeah, always worth the attempt and we get, we get as far as we can, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. That's a great point, Nicola and Bren. And I think as we've mentioned before, you know, this is all be a case by case basis. And I think first and foremost is as everyone has been um, vocalizing, be bold and be interesting and say what you want to say. And then really from there in that submission um, and selection process. Um, and even if you are selected from there, those discussions can keep, um, keep being had and very much art trek in the galleries on on the other side and we'll definitely um you know do everything we can to get it everywhere which is so much of the ethos of the gallery to be seen everywhere and to be accessible for everyone so yeah i think it's a nice way to kind of round up the session if you have any other questions please feel free to email the gallery at artichoke.uk.com um, thank you so much for joining everyone and thank you to Martin, Nicola and Bren as well. And one more thing before we end, um, just a reminder, the deadline is Sunday 16th of October. So you've got just a little over two weeks left to go. Yeah, I could just see one more comment slip through, just asking oh. do sketches. Um, Feel free to answer that. Reporting Bren. document, just to be so they did, um, so we, we get that one covered as well. Did the sketches oh. and supporting document involving copyright imagery is that okay it's like yes for the support for references for mood boards that's no problem at all yeah great that was lucky last okay well i think that ends the session so thank you so much everyone for joining and for jumping in uh, this will be um recorded so if you would like a copy of it for free to email the gallery at artichoke.uk.com um, and we anticipate it's going to live on our YouTube channel in the next few days so feel free to refer other potential applicants there as well. Thanks everyone thanks for joining us we hope you submit. Thank, Thank you. you take care Thank everyone. You. Bye.